can see here in the uh, the uh, diagram which or the circuit which is uh, is mentioned here and in the cockroach walton accelerator you can see that a rectifier or a multiplier produces a high voltage applied to the accelerating column and uh, that accelerated column uh, is used for accelerating the particles now what is this uh, cockroach walton type accelerator in a simple voltage is simple voltage multiplier where uh, is where a ac voltage charge the capacitors now you have seen that uh, when we discuss about the two plates there we were uh, applying a battery or a voltage source which were dc now here that uh, dc uh, voltage is replaced by a ac voltage source and uh, that will be responsible for going to much higher voltage because once you are using a dc voltage the capacitor can be charged only to that uh, voltage while in this case they uh, use the ac source ac voltage and uh, uh, then by by using several units the much higher voltages could be used so these uh, uh, they charge the capacitors and these two people cockroach and walton they uh, basically built a, a multiplier voltage multiplier and uh, that was connected to uh, uh, to uh, column section and that is accelerating tube and the many exper experiments were done in fact these two scientists they pa performed the first artificial splitting of nucleus atom in 1932 and for this what they did was that uh, they accelerated uh, proton beam to about uh, 600 to 700 keV and they bombarded lithium 7 and they found that it gets converted into two uh, two helium nuclei so you can say this was the first experiment of splitting the nucleus using accelerated beam as i mentioned earlier that before that all the experiments were done using alpha particles from the radioactive ion sources so this was the first uh, uh, experiment done using artificially accelerated beams uh, uh, and where the nucleus was split in this case for example uh, lithium 7 is split with the bombardment of proton and two uh, two uh, helium nuclei were uh, produced in fact uh, at that moment it was such a exciting experiment that they got nobel prize in physics in 1951 for this uh, splitting of atoms nucleus so you can see here uh, just to give you the configuration that there is a transformer here where the ac voltage is applied and across this you get a voltage which is uh, v is equal to v not sin omega t so this has a ac voltage has a frequency of uh, uh, omega and uh, it's a sinusoidal wave so this is the one and uh, in subsequent lecture uh, subsequent transparency you will say that how the system works uh, so uh, and uh, basically it is a network of capacitors and diodes and diodes are used uh, see when you were using a dc voltage source you could use the uh, uh, resistance uh, but here because the voltage is also going to negative and therefore you cannot use uh, resistance for charging the capacitor because the otherwise the current will flow in the reverse uh, direction if ac voltage is used then in one cycle half cycle it will uh, flow it will charge and in the other half cycle it will discharge so you will not get any voltage that is why in this case you have to use diodes and i have already talked about uh, the characteristics of the diode because uh, it functions uh, in forward bias and the reverse bias so these are two circuits for example in the first one is a single uh, single uh, stage here you can see here this is a source which is a ac voltage ac source and if a for example is positive in this case positive then 
this diode which is D1 will be forward wise and there will be current flowing in this uh, circuit and as a consequence of that this or condenser will be charged to a maximum voltage of V naught. While in the when it becomes negative then you see the, when this is negative then this will be reverse by so this will not conduct then this circuit will be active because this is negative and this is weak positive and then this this will be charged and that will be it will be charged to 2 V naught because one is this is V naught plus the voltage here. So you can see that this is a circuit which is uh, which can also be shown here in the negative for example this will not be charged this because this will not be active so it will be charged this will be charged through this circuit because this is now forward die. This is reverse and this is forward. So this uh, circuit which will be using here for charging is here. And this C2 will be charged to 2 V0. V0 is the maximum or the peak voltage of this AC signal which you are giving here. So you can, the same thing is explained here that uh, during the positive half cycle that is this, the point A is positive and the first diode D1 is conducting that is forward die and C1 will be uh, charged through diode D1 to V0. In the second case when the voltage is negative then D1 is reverse by but D2 is forward by so then circuit follows is here. So, it, so you will get uh, same thing is explained here and uh, I have already told you that uh, in the case of uh, uh, in the case when this is not DC voltage uh, then you cannot use the resistance because in the case of resistance there is nothing like forward or reverse bias and therefore uh, if in the positive positive polarity when this is positive let's say this is uh, charged or it is raised to the voltage and when the polarity changes then this will be discharge and uh, there will not be any voltage across there. This is also shown here the same thing which I have all. So this basically was the, so what Cockcroft Walton did was that instead of having just one unit which is shown here this is one unit of uh, multiplier and one unit or one stage is having two capacitors and two diodes. While well, uh, if you want to go to higher voltages then you can keep adding the stages and of course you can't go infinitely because then there will be other problems. So this is how the cockroach walton works and you can see here that this is a basically a three stage. So one stage, one, two, three. So like this it will be three times uh, voltage and each capacitor is 2 V0 so it will be 6 times of that V0. So this is how it works. Now in this case you can see that uh, uh, there is a capacitor of capacitance value C and uh, the capacitance value calculation of capacitance value is very important and uh, there and uh, for two parallel plates it is given as epsilon 0 a upon d a is the area of the plates and d is the distance between them and epsilon naught is the permittivity of air so this is the relation of capacitance uh, for uh, for uh, two plates where the medium is air while if you are using some other medium then it is gets multiplied by epsilon r where epsilon r is a relative permittivity of the medium and that you can see that it uh, by putting for example in the case of uh, we have done it suppose you put and close this system into sf6 which has higher uh, dielectric constant you can go to higher voltages so, so this is how the dc dc cockcroft walter type uh, DC accelerator works and you, I will further explain because you have to understand it that how the charging and discharging takes place. 
So these are some of the things you can see that is a set of uh, cap capacitors and the diodes. So you take that first one. If suppose the AC voltage is applied, which is V naught sine omega t. So first one is uh, positive. Uh, and let's say this is A and this is B, which is shown here. Here. Now if A is negative, if this point is negative with respect to this ground. So this ground, then this diode will be forward biased and uh, for charging the current will flow through the path which is shown here in red. So in the first positive, uh, first uh, uh, half of the cycle, this will be active and uh, this capacitor will be charged. In the next half cycle, this, uh, see earlier this was negative, now it becomes positive. So when it is positive, then this will not conduct and uh, so this will take, this becomes positive and this becomes negative and therefore in the second half, which is negative cycle, then this current will flow through this uh, cycle. So this uh, this condenser will be charged, this capacitor will be charged to V twice of V naught and uh, that is because the, see this is charged in the first one for to V naught and uh, to this will be added as far as the voltage at this point is concerned. So this plus the voltage across this will be V naught plus V naught sin omega t and uh, therefore since the voltage across this this is uh, V naught plus V naught sin omega t so this capacitor will be charged to 2 V naught which is the maximum value of this. Like this you can keep adding units so this is called one stage. Similarly next will be this stage and so on and each stage will give uh, a, a voltage of 2 V naught and suppose you have 10 stages, then you will have 2 into n into v naught. So you can, of course then the, the problem of uh, that voltage, uh, voltage breakdown will come and uh, you cannot go infinitely. So now you are connecting this because ultimate aim, your aim is to, uh, to accelerate the particles. So you connect uh, you connect an accelerating tube here, for example, with an ion source and that ion source uh, you enclose in a high voltage terminal and that is connected to this and then you have several electrodes and then you connect these ones here and the particles will be accelerated and current will flow. When current is flowing, there will be a drain this will be a drain on the high voltage and therefore the voltage will slightly come down depending upon how much voltage is dropped across this because when the current is passing through the accelerating tube uh, so that is equivalent to a voltage drop that is shown here as a delta V so the total V the voltage will not be 2 and V naught but it will be reduced by a delta V and of course in this one the enter because we are using different systems and there is always some variation and there will be little bit uh, uh, uncertainty in the, uh, uh, the voltage and that is called this delta V here. So that actually defines the beam resolution So and that is a random and that is a function of several for example breakdown voltages and several, uh, several factors uh, are in, uh, taking care of this. Uh, and this uh, V, uh, the delta V, which is a drop, will depend upon how many stages you are using. And this is the empirical relation and it is 1 by Fc. F is the uh, frequency of the AC voltage, which you are input AC voltage and see the capacitance of the entire system. 
So you can see that if you want to have a, a very small drop delta V, then the frequency and the capacitance has to be very large, as large as possible. And uh, of course, uh, you should also have a number of stages also should be small, then only delta V will be small. Now all these things are contradictory because if you have less number of stages, then obviously the total voltage will be less. And if you have high C, then the, uh, as you have seen in the second lecture, that if the capacitance value is large, then the charging of the capacitor takes longer time. And therefore, uh, uh, you have to have a smaller C if you want to have very fast. But if you have a smaller C here, then del delta uh, V, which is uncertainty in the voltage, will be large. And therefore, you have to optimize this equation uh, to in terms of all the three parameters, that is F, frequency, capacitance value C, and the number of stages. And of course, you have to also see that uh, voltage drop is also minimized because as I said in the preamble, the, uh, you would like to have the voltage as fixed as possible, a constant one, and that again is given by this. So that also says, now you see that whatever for delta uh, V, you needed a smaller number of, here also you should have a small number of, number of stages. Uh, if you want to have a ripple, it's as low as possible. And so both of them show that uh, uh, N, F, F and C have to be large and number of stages have to be small if you want to have both these things as small as possible. And uh, that somehow contradicts the requirements and therefore you have to find an optimum value of uh, all the three parameters. So while you are uh, you are uh, designing the Cockroach Walton type of accelerator, then you have to keep uh, uh, optimized all these parameters. So in order to keep voltage drop and ripple small, one should choose the frequency f and the capacitance value c uh, as large as possible, and limit the number of stages. Uh, to and uh, to uh, number of stages and to as small as possible, and that will not uh, be uh, in the, uh, that is in contradiction with the high voltages you want to have. There is another parameter which you have to be very careful uh, while designing these accelerators is that electric field at the surface of the electrodes should be kept in such a way that corona discharges are not taking place otherwise not only the voltage will come down that will be another load that will voltage will come down but also this uncertainty in the voltage and the fluctuation in the voltage there will also be luck and therefore the sharp edges should be avoided so that uh, corona formation does not take place the electric field uh, is proportional to 1 by uh, function of R. R is the radius of that sharp surface. So if it is a very sharp surface, the electric field will be very large. As a consequence of uh, high electric field, the voltage breakdown will take place. So you can see here, it is mentioned that electric field is equal to V, the voltage, divided by R but it's basically a function of R. So if R is very small, that means if it is a sharp point, then the electric field will be very large and the breakdown will uh, happen and the corona formation will be taking place. So all the sharp surfaces should be avoided. For open air accelerators, the electric field should not exceed, uh, empirically it is shown, it is measured that it should not exceed more than 3 million volts per meter. And as a consequence of that, if you want to do all this, 
uh, then you cannot uh, exceed 1.5 million volts in the case of Cockroach Walton. So that is why, as I mentioned earlier, that the maximum voltage uh, which could be achieved in the case of uh, uh, Cockroach Walton type of accelerator was from 1.25 to 1.5 million volts. Now, when you are using this Cockroach Walton type of accelerators for acceleration of charged particles, then the accelerating tube should have ultra high vacuum because otherwise when the particles are accelerated, accelerated and they move inside the accelerating tube and the vacuum is not good then there will be lot of collisions and there will be not only there will be loss of energy but there uncertainty in the energy will also exist. So a high vacuum is needed to minimize the electrons generated from the collisions of, uh, of uh, ions uh, with the residual gas because the, if the vacuum is not good there will be a lot of residual gas in the accelerating tube. In some accelerators electron suppressors are used to avoid these things. Permanent magnets are also used uh, in accelerating tube to deflect those electrons which are generated because of collisions and uh, therefore uh, they, they don't get multiplied and uh, the load is decreased and the breakdown also will be avoided. So, so these are some of, the, some of the precautions which we have to take in all the DC accelerators. Now this uh, uh, slide I have shown you earlier that even the cockroach Walton type of accelerators were very useful in many for many applications and two applications uh, which were very uh, very uh, efficiently done to uh, one was the uh, DT reaction and other was DT reaction and uh, uh, the Q values of these reactions, they both of them produce uh, neutrons and uh, in fact even today the second one is used for uh, generating uh, monoenergetic uh, neutrons of 14 MeV because the second, uh, second reaction has a Q value of uh, 17.6 MeV and depending upon the masses, for example the kinetic energy will be shared between the, the products, for example here, if the D is falling on tritium, is uh, going to uh, helium-4 plus neutron. <coughs> and the kinetic energy, you can say that uh, from the kinematics, you can say the energy of the neutron will be 4 by 5 times and that will be about 14. So it is 14 uh, MBV neutrons are produced through re this reaction and the, from the first one uh, D plus D you get 2 MBV neutrons. So these, uh, these uh, uh, two reactions are very popular and uh, even the cockroach walton type of accelerator was very useful in this. Now these cockroach walton accelerators are still used as pre-injector for the large accelerator facilities. In fact, uh, till almost like 80s, they were the only ones which were used as a pre injector uh, Of course, in the, around that time, another accelerator was developed. This is a RFQ, radio frequency quarter code. And now all the cockroach Walton accelerators have been replaced by that. But till that time, for several decades, it was the unique accelerator which was used as pre-injector even in the hundreds of GeV uh, accelerator facilities and uh, they were very useful, they are very rugged, they are perfect and uh, not only in as a pre-injector but they have also been used for uh, several applications which are listed here and which you can see that uh, some of them important ones. And since the energies were less than about 1.5 MeV, they could only be used for application in solid state atomic and solid state physics experiments, ion beam modifications of materials, atomic physics. And uh, now this 
14 MeV neutrons have been used for uh, uh, doing demo experiments uh, in accelerator driven subcritical reactor systems and uh, they are very useful and they are generating a lot of data. Now the advantages of this uh, cockroach walton type of accelerator is that as you have seen that only capacitors and diodes are used and uh, using these two simple uh, components, electronics components, you can step up the low voltages to high voltages depending upon how many stage is used. So that is one advantage. So you are using only two kind of components, capacitors and diodes. This eliminates the requirement of the heavy core, um, for example here. Uh, you are using a transformer and uh, simple transformer and bulk of the insulator and uh, uh, cutting is required that you can eliminate. Voltage across each stage of the cascade is equal to twice the peak value of the AC voltage, voltage in the half wave rectifier and advantage of such circuit. This is this becomes uh, advantage because it is uh, 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 capacitor is charged to the peak voltage. Another advantage is that it needs very cost effective components and it is very easy to insulate them. So it, uh, the whole system is very cheap. One can also tap the output from various states. Suppose if you are having a big uh, cockroach walton and you don't want to use it, you can tap the voltage from any place and uh, you can use it. One big advantage uh, even today is that high average current, this is a DC voltage uh, multiplier, so high average current can be obtained in this case. So these are some of the advantages and uh, of course the disadvantage as I said was that the maximum voltage is limited to about 1.5 million volts and therefore the uh, breakdown of the insulate, insulations have to be avoided and uh, if you want to do that you cannot go to very high voltages. So these are some of the disadvantages. So if you want to go to higher voltages then uh, you cannot use this up to 1 to 1.5 there is no problem. They are one of the very good accelerators, multipliers and uh, thank you very much.